Could we see a blockbuster trade at the 2022 NHL Draft involving Montreal, Arizona, and the 22 first overall pick? We'll discuss this idea coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a very interesting trade idea I want to talk to you about here today. See what everybody thinks before Habs fans can be get out of their mind and say how ridiculous this idea might be. I just want to preference where it came from and where you should direct your feedback if you really don't like the concept. Essentially, this was an idea discussed on the 32 Thoughts podcast hosted by Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman. It's an idea that Merrick brought up to see what Friedman thought. Of course, uh, if you listen to that podcast regularly or follow along with those two guys on Sportsnet between their Hockey Night in Canada segments and the podcast, you'll know that Jeff Merrick uh, likes to uh, create some pretty interesting ideas sometimes, and he absolutely thrives on seeing chaos amongst the NHL and just wild ideas. Uh, he's pretty creative. A lot of times, Elliot hates his ideas and is not afraid to tell him so. The banter back and forth is fun to listen to and if you follow along with this channel you'll know that i'm a big fan of that podcast and their work and certainly follow it very very closely so if you hate the idea completely or think it's ridiculous you can let jeff merrick know on twitter and uh, kind of go from there but essentially this is not a trade rumor we're not suggesting that these two teams are having conversations about actually doing this just an idea that jeff merrick brought up and here's the concept, here's essentially how it would work. So he's suggesting that would the Arizona Coyotes go to the Montreal Canadiens and say, we would like to trade for first overall, and to do that, we would offer you our first round pick in 2022, which is number three overall, and we'll also include next year's first round pick. Now, the concept behind this, just to give you a little bit of idea and background, as we know the Arizona Coyotes are going into a new phase. We know they've been a low-ranking team in the standings for the last few years, like for a while now. But based on where things are going, they're going into a much smaller arena next year. They shed a lot of contracts, a lot of, you know, not all, but a good chunk of players that are, you know, better quality. They're, they're bound to be in a situation where they're probably not going to want to be overly competitive for the next few years to get some high draft picks. So, Essentially, a lot of people, even though it's way too early, are writing them off and suggesting that they will probably be the 32nd ranked team in the NHL next year. I guess the only time will tell if they will be right. I wouldn't be com thinking that, that it's completely unrealistic. It very well could happen. We'll have to see what they do with their roster as the offseason begins to unfold here. But I guess a couple of things to keep in mind. We know that the Montreal Canadiens are hosting the draft this year. We also know they haven't hosted the draft in quite some time. We also know that the team hosting the draft has not picked first overall since 1985 uh, when the Maple Leafs drafted Wendell Clark. So it's been a super, super long time. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens have a new regime here with Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon, and this is going to be a big deal. This is going to be the first in-person draft in a few years. Obviously, the last two have been done virtually, which is really not a lot of fun uh, from an entertainment and fan perspective. So the fans will be filling the building. Montreal has a lot to consider here, not only for their team and what's best but you know they, they don't certainly want the fan base turning on them and getting uh pissed that they're trading the first overall pick that the first time they've had it in in forever and a day so with all that in mind i guess you can look at the odds here of arizona getting the first overall pick next year and how this could all work essentially now here's another part of this to keep in mind montreal right now is picking one arizona is picking three and in between them you have new jersey now, at the top of the draft board, you've got Shane Wright, who's expected to go number one, um, been the consensus number one overall pick for quite some time. Uh, you've got uh, Logan Cooley, who's arguably in that 2-3 spot. Uh, most places have him at number two, also a center and under the United States national team program. He's going to play college hockey next year and is a really talented center as well. The Shane Wright is a little bit more of a complete player. Um, at that stage of his career, so he's kind of getting the nudge here. And you have Juraj Slavkovsky, the big Slovakian winger, six foot four, 
Well over 200 pounds, big, strong, power forward potential. Uh, scored seven goals in seven games, I believe, for his country at the Olympics this year. Had a phenomenal season. So those are your likely your top three picks. Now, if you look at the Devils, who sit between Montreal and Arizona at number two, they have pretty good depth down the middle. They've already got Nico Heischer, Jack Hughes, and Dawson Mercer. So would they want to take... You know, a Shane Wright or a Logan Cooley if they were fortunate enough to grab one of those prospects. I think when you're picking second overall, you quite often have to go with best player available as always the wise move. You never know what centers might not play center at the NHL. Some might turn out to be wingers. I've seen NHL rosters be filled of former center icemen uh, turned into wingers. It, it's just the nature of how things go. Not everybody is going to be drafted. And if you're good enough as a center at the lower levels, it doesn't mean you're going to be that in the NHL. So so you have to think about that. But number two to factor in here with all this is between Slavkovsky and Cooley, depending on where your head is at and what prospect ranking system you want to follow, there's a lot to have them flip-flop between two and three. So it's possible that regardless of best player available and thinking of position, that the Devils might see Slavkovsky is being the best, like number two best prospect in this draft. That's a real solid possibility, and they might have him penciled in to be their guy. So, I mean, you could see a scenario where Montreal, let's say Montreal did something unexpected and won a Cooley over Wright, which is not something we're hearing right now. But if they did, it wouldn't matter. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, Arizona or New Jersey, sorry, would want. Slavkowski anyways at two. We don't know. We don't know how they feel about things. There would be the wild card in a scenario. And if any kind of crazy trade went down, kind of like what we saw all those years ago with Vancouver getting the Sedin Twins, you almost need that other team to be involved to kind of play ball with you to kind of confirm who they're taking so they don't screw it all up for you because that would be a disaster, right? So uh, you have that to think about. Montreal theoretically could give Arizona the top pick. Let's say that uh, Montreal... Uh, says, okay, well, between Wright and Cooley, uh, we don't see a huge deal of difference. We'd be thrilled to have either one. Wright's probably a little bit better two-way player, but Cooley might be better offensively. That's a real possibility at this point. Um, We'll have to see how things turn out. It's hard to see a crystal ball and how they'll develop, but that's possible. So they trade the first overall pick to Arizona. Arizona gets Shane Wright. Let's say the Devils take Slavkowski. Montreal still gets Logan Cooley at number three which is pretty darn good, you know, and they get the Coyotes first round pick next year, which they're hoping will be first overall. We also don't know about the Montreal Canadiens and how much they're going to change next year. They might not be a whole lot better either. It might also have another really high pick. Montreal, Arizona very well could be not only in the lottery, but two of the teams with the, say the, in the you know, three or four best odds of getting first overall. So Montreal could then have and a deeper draft and a more talented draft by many scouts, uh, you know, suggestions that they could have two high picks next year, maybe having a better shot at getting Connor Bedard. If they could walk away with Cooley now, Bedard next year, plus their own pick, maybe being still in the top four or five, that would be phenomenal. So from Montreal's perspective, I really don't think that that's all that bad of a trade. Now you take away the entertainment factor of picking first overall and all that and the i guess the uncertainty see that's the part that makes this crazy and extremely unlikely to happen but it's fun to think about um is we don't know where the arizona pick would be next year you're assuming it'd be first overall now from the coyotes perspective here's the thing now look at it from their perspective they're like okay we've had terrible luck terrible luck with the nhl draft lottery uh, we've been having the, either the best or the second, like the top two or three odds in this lottery a number of times. Because unfortunately, they've been they've been bad and low in the standings a lot in the last decade. And they've never gotten first overall. So even if they are the worst team next year, would that bad luck continue and they not get the first overall pick? So there's no guarantee they're going to get Connor Bedard. If they make this trade, they're guaranteed first overall now, and they get their pick of who they want for the 22 draft. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of the rationale behind it. But however, here's the thing, is they're down a pick. They're down a high pick at that. 
even if they don't have the luck next year and they don't get first overall to go for Bedard, they would still be picking likely in the top two to four selections, assuming they're near the bottom, assuming everything plays out like a lot of people are predicting. That's still a pretty high pick and a pretty good draft. And right now you're picking third, and you're either going to get, let's say that the Habs do go with Wright as expected. If the Devils, they either go with Slavkowski or Cooley, and you're going to get the other guy. So you're either going to get a six foot four, 200 pound Slovakian power forward scoring winger who's had a tremendous year and it looks to be a real solid kid to go to the NHL in the near future. Like, I mean, he could even jump in quickly because he's one of the few guys I think that are NHL ready from that physical standpoint. Be probably best to give him another year to develop, but still. Um, and then, or, or you get Logan Cooley, who's a really gifted offensive centerman going to college. And he can play college hockey for a year or two while you're riding out, getting your arena sorted. Like, that's not terrible. So, to me, this idea from Montreal's perspective makes a lot more sense than it does on Arizona's perspective. But if you're the Coyotes, and just to give you a quick history lesson here, I mean, we've talked about, about draft lottery history on the channel recently going into it uh, before it took place. I did a video looking at the odds of winning for the how the NHL put the odds out for this year because there was some rule changes, as well as a history of how teams have won in the last, I, actually I looked at 20 years, we'll look at quickly here at 10 years now. Um, so courtesy of the NHL.com records website, uh, here's a list of who's won. So if you look at 2022, Montreal wins, they had the best odds. 2021, Buffalo won, and of course that's the Owen Power draft. They won with the best odds. So the last two, we've seen the team with the best chance to win actually win. Now, 2020 was a complete set of unique circumstances here. Different draft done in two phases with the lottery because they had the pandemic shortened season. So, of course, we know that they had the play-in round, qualifying round, if you will, for a whole bunch of teams to get more teams in, into it. And all the losing teams, regardless of where they were at in the standings, went into the lottery along with the non-playoff teams. So there was a group of teams ranked 8 through 15 that did not make the playoffs, or that sorry, that theoretically didn't make the playoffs, that lost in the qualifying round, which involved the New York Rangers winning the draft and going all the way up to number one to draft Alexi Lafreniere. It was unique and odd and different, right? So the team with the best odds didn't win. Now in 2019, the Devils won that first overall pick. Uh, the Jack Hughes draft. They had the third best odds. They moved up to number one. New Jersey's had incredible luck here uh, with these drafts, as you can see. And in 2018, Buffalo, again, that's the Rasmus Dahlin draft, had the best odds, and they won. So in the last five years, three of the top, three out of five times, the team with the best chance to win actually won. One of those times was a really set of unique odd circumstances in 2020, driven by the pandemic. And then in 2019, you had a team go from third west up to number one. The five years prior to that in 2017, you saw New Jersey with the fifth best odds go to number one. That's the Nico Heischer draft. See, this team is, I swear, they're, they're one of the reasons why the rules changed again because everybody complained about the Devils more recently. And before that, it was the Oilers winning all the time. Uh, it seemed like they had a horseshoe, uh, you know, where. In 2016, the Maple Leafs, that's the Matthews draft. They had the best chance of getting Austin Matthews in first overall, and they actually got it. And then the four years before that, the team with the best odds did not win. You saw Edmonton go from 3-1 to one in 2015 to get Connor McDavid. You saw 2014, the Panthers go from second best to number one, where they took Aaron Ekblad. And in 2013, the Avalanche went from two up to one to grab Nathan McKinnon. And of course, 2012 was the Neil Yakupov draft, where the Oilers probably wish they'd done something different there, but they went from two to one as well. So even though we've had three in the last five Best odds actually get it. If you go back 10 years, it's only four out of the last 10. But like I said, we've had rule changes to kind of help the bottom ranked teams a little bit. So we should see uh, more of a continuation without without seeing those bigger jumps. So if you're Arizona, you, you're looking at that and you're thinking, geez, you know, the, we've had terrible, terrible luck. Four to 10, with, you know, may, maybe we gamble here. But then you're down a pick. So you cannot afford, if you're the Coyotes, being a bottom dweller, trying to work your way out of this to become more competitive, to keep the fan base somewhat interested that's there, you can't afford to be giving away a first-round pick for a sure 
thing. Because even if you pick two, three, four, five, whatever next year, that's still an extra pretty good prospect that you're likely going to be able to get if you do things right as compared to gambling now to get it right with Shane Wright. So to me, this trade never happens. Now, if Arizona is crazy enough to approach Montreal with this, I think that Montreal would listen. I, you would have to be crazy not to listen to that, but I think you'd also have to be out of your mind if you're Arizona to even offer that. Now, could there be a trade for first overall and other things considered in another capacity? I don't think Montreal is really going to want to do that because of the. Uh, I think they're going to be cautious here, but maybe because we know that Montreal and Arizona have also talked about the Shea Weber contract. That could be very a separate deal. Doesn't mean it's going to involve any kind of first overall pick or anything like that. So it's hard to say. But this was like, like I said, this is just an interesting concept proposed by Jeff Merrick. Elliot Friedman said, if you're Montreal, you listen for sure. If you're Arizona, you don't even offer it. He hated the idea, thought it was crazy. I kind of think it's kind of crazy too. But it's interesting to think about. And if you're a Habs fan and Arizona approached you with this idea, do you do it? Now, if you're a Coyotes fan, you probably hope your team never approaches Montreal about this because it's ridiculously crazy and risky, and I don't think you should do it. And uh, let me know your thoughts on either side of it, no matter where you stand or if you're neutral and not a fan of either team. Give me your thoughts. We'll talk about it further as we get closer to the draft. As you know, every year, in case you haven't been paying attention, every single year, once the draft lottery is done and we know who's picking first overall, there is always either, some of it's just ideas like this being tossed around about would they consider a first overall pick trade? And then there will be likely, don't be surprised if there are rumors from fairly legit writers and sources out there that suggest that teams are inquiring about trading for this pick and what the packages could look like and should Montreal consider it. Don't think that it's ridiculous or absurd because you know as the leaders of that franchise, Jeff Gordon and Ken Hughes, have to listen when teams call about trades. They don't have to listen very long. They can hang up the phone if it sounds crazy. But if it's a chance to make their team that much better, if a team came along with a ridiculous offer, they have to listen because it could work out to be beneficial for them. So there's bound to be a few rumors pop up between now and the draft saying that Montreal's either getting offers or they're considering this, that, or the other. And it doesn't mean any of it's going to happen, but that's what we do here is we talk about what's being discussed in the hockey world to see what everybody thinks and just to have a fun conversation. So let me know your thoughts around this crazy idea down in the comments. We'll discuss further. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all things related to the 2022 NHL draft, as well as all the news, rumors, and of course, we analyze all 32 teams here at Top Shelf Hockey. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.